Okay, so this is my hot sauce. Now, this is what we're going to end up doing. So it's like we're way ahead of ourselves, but that's okay. There's a, a very good reason why we want to do this. I want to show you how to approach doing this so that you have a good bit of time to actually go in and practice and fail. And if you have questions, you can come see me and you can get this down. It's not that difficult, but it does require a little tiny bit of work to pull it off. I'm going to go through the process of doing this. I'm going to show you how I, how I create a form for this. Let me go let me go to the uh, let me go to the window menu. Let me select all these things. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I'll just select those two right there. I'll select this guy. That guy. No, you know what? I'll select this guy. That's the one I'll select. Uh, let me go to my layers panel, right here, and let me unlock my layers. Let me select this guy right here, and I, you already can see something's going on here. I'm going to go to the window menu. And I'm going to open up, come on, I'm going to go to the window, open, uh, I'm going to go to appearance. And the appearance panel, this is very important that you know this. Have, have either one of you ever worked with the appearance panel before? No. Okay, the appearance panel can do all kinds of things for you. As a matter of fact, one of the really great things that the appearance panel can do for you is it can give you beautiful um, stroked text. If you try to put a stroke on text without using the appearance panel, you end up with absolute garbage. So when you want to really put nice strokes around text, you do that with the appearance panel. As a matter of fact, at the end of the night, if I have some minute moments, one of you guys remind me and I'll show you how that works. You know what I'm saying when I say stroked text, type with a uh, a stroke around it as opposed to a fill or a stroke with a fill? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. There's, if, you, if you do it without using the appearance panel, it, it, it ends up looking really bad, and it's a very, very poor method to do it. With the appearance panel, you come up with something that's absolutely sensational. But let me just show you what I'm going to do with the appearance panel right now. Uh, this is my 3D model. The appearance panel records everything that you do. So I've got a, a 3D revolve around this. And if I hit the eyeball, I'm going to toggle the visibility of that 3D revolve. So when I do that, I can now click and I can deselect this. And you see what I made? You see the shape that I made to make my bottle? Does everybody see what I did there? That is called a profile. Okay. What I'm about to do with this is I'm about to take that profile and I'm going to revolve that profile. I'm not going to do it. Illustrator is going to do it. Adobe Illustrator is going to revolve that profile for me and make it so I can actually um, have what looks like a realistic looking bottle. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing with this um, uh, box over here. I can create a shape, a basic shape, which I'll do in a little while, and show you how to extrude that out and make a box, and then you can apply your graphics to that box. You can also apply graphics to your um, bottle of uh, hot sauce, okay? This is what I'm going to do. I would like to teach you guys how to do this. If, if you do this, what do you guys think? Would you like to have a uh, would you like to have a prototype like this in your portfolio? Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Well, I think you can do it because I don't think it's incredibly difficult. I think it's something that you could do. And I'm going to show you how to do it tonight. And the reason I'm doing it tonight is because you still got three full weeks left to play with this and learn it. And I think it is something that you definitely should learn. And if you learn this in this course, this w alone will be worth the price of admission. Okay? All right, let me show you how I'm going to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'll open up my layers panel for a minute. I have a layer here. I got original. There's my original. See the original? That's the, that's the bottle that I'm going to use to create my profile, okay? I got the done layer right there is my done layer, and it'll come up and it'll go away, all right? And I'm going to hide that layer. And I'm going to show my original layer. And then I have this layer. I'm going to lock the done layer. And I'm going to lock the original layer. Okay? I have a layer called do. And the only reason I call it do is because 
I, I'm not very imaginative, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this. So that's why I call it the do layer, all right? So my original is down here at the bottom, and that's what I'm going to use as my template to create this. Already done is on that layer, and I've hid that so that we can concentrate on what I'm about to do, okay? We good so far? Yes. All right. So the first thing, did you say something, Namar? No, go ahead. I'm, I'm good. All right. So first thing that I want to do here is I want to drag a guide out. And what I want to do is I want to put the guide in about the middle of that bottle. I, it's, it should be, you know, as close to the middle of the bottle as you possibly can make it. I'm probably pretty good right about, oh, boy, this is hard. Right about, I'm going to go there. It's good enough, I think. Okay. Go to the view menu, uh, the top view, guides, show guides. There it is. And actually, I've got another guide out here. Let me go to the window menu, view, guides, unlock guides. Let me get rid of that because I don't really need that one. Did I lock it? View guides. Yeah, no, it's unlocked. What the heck's the story here? Y'all, we know why it's on another layer. That's why. Oh. What layer is it on? Hold on. Let me see what layer that's on. Can delete it. You can get that out of here. Get that out of here. Get that out of here. And I think I got two here. That looks like two. Yep. Delete it. There we go. Okay. I think we're good. Hide that. Son of a gun. All right. Well, you know what? I'm going to have to do it again. Lock that layer and drag the guide out. I should do it. Okay. I think we're good. All right, there it is. All right, and I'm going to go view guides, lock guides. I want to lock that guide down. The reason I want to lock that guide down is I'm about to start working with the um, basic shape tools. Uh, I, I'm going to use two things. I'm going to use this guy right here. Have you ever done this before? Have either one of you ever done that before? No. Okay. No. All right. So you know, you know that each one of these tools, not every single one, but many of these tools have more than one tool associated with it, right? In yes. Illustrator, yes. in Illustrator, you have this great capacity to be able to click on that and bring that little uh, panel up. And if you go all the way over to the right here, you see there's a little tab there with a little arrow. You see that where I'm sitting? I do now, yes. That's actually called the tear out. It's actually got a name for that thing. And you click on that, and now you have all of those tools that you can bring out and sit close by you to work with. Hi, there's somebody new here, Brienne. Uh, you want to say hello to everybody real quick? Hello, everybody. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Are you okay so far? I, I asked the other two this. Are you okay with the assignment, the assessment, and all that stuff? As far as I know. Okay. I'm only asking, do you have any questions or anything or any issues? Not, that, not at this point, no. Uh, okay. Uh, very quickly, uh, when you watch the video, you'll get a better explanation of what's going on. But what I'm doing is we have a final, and the final is going to be that you have to create a, 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 a form uh, of a of a bottle and you have to create a box and I'm showing you this week at the very beginning how to do that the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to give you as much time as possible to digest this and to maybe even go in and play with this this is a lot of fun and it is something that you can do I want you to have as much time as possible to go in and fool around with this and digest this so I, I'm going to show you show it to you this week, and then as we, the weeks progress and you work with it, you can show me what you did, or if you have problems, you can talk to me about the problems, and I can get you at the end to be able to handle this, okay? Oh, well, that sounds great. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to bring these tools out because I'm going to use, that's not the right tool. I want the, um, the pen tool. I'm going to use the pen tool. So I use the tear out and bring the pen tool out, okay? And the other tool I need are the basic shape tool, although I only need really one tool, I'll bring them out anyway, okay? And now what I'm going to do is, I want to get these tools ra rather close to this because I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to zoom in on this guy, 
Okay, so let's bring this thing right up. And one more is good. That's probably okay. And all right, and I'm going to actually, uh, I'm all set with my layers. Yes, okay. I'm going to actually move this down a little bit. All right, so now here's the deal. Um, I should probably show this, Brianne, since you're here, you don't know exactly what we're doing. Let me just quickly show you what we're doing. I did just, it just occurred to me, she probably doesn't really know what we're doing. This is what we're doing. This is my bottle. That's what you guys are going to make. Now, there's, you're going to make something. It doesn't necessarily, you're not necessarily going to use um, the uh, Wild Bill but there's one of three projects, and both of them, all three of them involve probably making some sort of bottle in some sort of box. So what I am doing is I'm demonstrating how I went about making my 3D model, okay? That's what we're doing, all right? And as a matter of fact, you know what I'm thinking now? I think what I'm going to do is, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy, and I think I'm going to bring that up to the do layer so we actually have a model to look at as we do this and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the size of it too let's bring it down to about 70 percent 70 percent and hit okay there we go perfect all right the reason I'm doing this is because now we actually have a sample to look at this is what I'm doing this is exactly what I'm doing okay guys you good yes Yes, I'm good. All right. Yes. So I'm going to hide, hide this layer, make sure I'm on the do layer, lock that layer, uh, and then I'm going to come in here once again, and let's zoom in on this. That's probably pretty good. And I'm going to zoom, move it over this way a little bit. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a look at this. Take a look at this. This is the piece that I'm about to do. Okay? That's the piece that I'm going to do. This is the cap. That's the piece I'm going to do for the cap. It looks complicated, but believe me, it's not that difficult to do. It's rather simple. Now, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. The bottom line is that we're going to use basic shapes wherever possible. We're not going to be able to use basic shapes everywhere, but we'll use basic shapes wherever possible. And then what's very important is that you have a little bit of control with your pen tool. Here's something that you need to know. I use only as many anchor points as I absolutely need to create my shape. The reason is the more anchor points you have, the more points of interest there is on your revolve, the more detail you get. And you, don't, you only want detail in certain places. So you want to be very careful when you use your um, anchor points and line segments, okay? That's the only thing I wanted to uh, warn you about, all right? All right, here we go. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to grab my rounded rectangle. And then I'm going to come over here on my guide, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to sit right in the center, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag out a rounded rectangle about the size of my cap, which is right about there. And I think I probably want to make my, uh, cur my corners a little bit more curved. Now, if, if I'm, I'm holding the mouse down, this is the important thing. And as a matter of fact, I think I've got to go a little bit lower. I think I've got to actually go to here. Yeah, I've got to go to about there. That's where I've got to go. If I want to make my corners more curving or more, you know, round or square, I can use, I'm holding the mouse down. I use the up arrow. And you see, when I use the up arrow, do you see how my corners become less? See? And they become squarer. And if I go the other way, it becomes more round. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes. Okay. So I think I'm going to go right about there, and I think I'll come a little bit lower. Right about there is good. Okay? So there is my first, and I'll bring up my layers. Let me actually bring my layers out and put them way over here. Okay, the reason I'm doing this is because now I can hide the back, and you can actually see what I did. See what I did there? That's what I did. Now, I made one mistake, and that is that I don't have a color. I don't have anything on this. So I'm just going to put black on that, okay? So now I actually have a stroke of black, and I have no fill, all right? That's what I want. I want a stroke of black and no fill for my, uh, for my art that I'm working with, okay? Now, 
I need to make I need to make this thing into a cap. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get rid of the curving on this side. Now I can do that. I can actually do that by just dragging this thing over like that. Okay? And you see how by doing that, you see how I end up with a straight line here and a straight line there because I got this thing all the way over there. You see what I'm doing? There's my center. I end up with a straight edge there because I've moved this over and I've eliminated that curve. Do you understand what I'm talking about? No. Yes. Okay. Look at my shape. I want the shape to look like that. I don't want that curve here. I want it to be square. There's my center line. This is where I'm going to cut my piece at the end. So if I didn't do this, watch Control Z, you see how it's curved there? Okay. That's not what I want. I want it to be straight like that. So the easiest way to do it, and what I'm trying to point out to you is that I'm trying to show you the simplest way to go about doing this. Because once you do this a simple way, and once you understand how it works, you can go in and you can start doing all sorts of crazy stuff with this, and you'll have a lot of fun with it. If you go to my website, wrsdesign.com, I built my website using Adobe Muse, and I have almost every single graphic element that's on my, um, my website is made up using Adobe 3D. I have um, felt tip markers, I have X-Acto knives, I have um, uh, highlighters, I have pencils, I have brushes, every single one of them was made using Adobe 3D. And if you take a look at them, they almost look like photographs of the real thing. That's how powerful this is. Once you are comfortable with it, I'm just trying to get you comfortable with it. That's all I'm trying to do now. Okay? Are we good? We're good. All right. So I'm going to move this over like this. And again, I'm thinking about this in the simplest terms. All right. Now I want to put that circle in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here I'm going to get the ellipse tool, and I'm going to come in that area, hold the shift key down, and I'm going to drag myself out a circle that's, oh, that's a little bit big. So let me make it a little bit smaller, probably about like, like that's good. That's probably good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my move tool, and I'm going to select these two objects, and I'm going to go to my align panel, and I want to align them to the bottom. Okay, whoop, oh, you know why? Oh, edit undo. I forgot one thing. Edit undo. I forgot one very important thing. I don't want to align it to the artboard. Align it, align it to selection, okay? I had it set wrong. I had it set to align to, to artboard. Now it's aligned to a section, to a selection. I these, do that. Okay, so you see how that moved it down a little bit? I want to move it up a little bit now. Okay, and what I want to do is I want that look. So I'm going to deselect it. I'm going to click on my little circle, and I'm very carefully just going to move it over until the thing sits like that. And I went a little too far. Let me go back one. That's probably good. That's perfect right there. So you see? Can you see what's happening? Yes. Can you see how that's beginning to look like that? Yes. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of those guys by marqueeing. You guys know what marqueeing is, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to select them both by marqueeing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Pathfinder panel. I don't know whether I have the Pathfinder panel out. Nope, I don't. Let's go to Window. Let's go to Pathfinder. Right here. Boom. Pathfinder. Okay. And I'm going to move my Pathfinder. Come on. Over here a little bit. And I'm just going to use the combine, or unite, I should say, unite. Both of these are selected. I hit unite, and I get that. Look at that. See how that now looks like that? Yeah. Close enough, right? Nice. All right. Now, so that you guys understand what the heck I was doing here, I am going to cut this bit out because I need it to end up looking like this. I need what's called a profile. I want you to think in terms of a profile. That's what we're creating. We're creating a profile for our, our object. That's what we're creating. It's a profile. So it's important for you to think about this as a profile, all right? As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me do this. Let me go edit undo, and let me do this. Let me just click on this, and let me go edit copy, 
All right, and now let me go back in and let me do that again. And I'll go edit, paste. And now I have another one of those little circles because I'm going to use this circle a bunch of other times. So I'll have consistency, okay? All right, now watch what I'm going to do. I want to cut this thing. I want to get this thing cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. Do you see where the eraser is? Yes. Okay, there's a tool in there called the scissors tool. All right, have you ever heard, have you ever worked with the scissors tool yet? I have not. No, no, I haven't either. And I've always wanted to try to work with it. So it's simple. All you are really doing is using that scissor tool to clip into your path. Now, I have a guide here. See my guide? I'm going to very carefully go and sit right on top of that guide and make sure I'm sitting right on my path. I want to get right on my guide and right on my path, and I click, and it cut that path. Now watch, I'll do it again. I'll come down at the bottom, and I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to click, and it cut that path. Now watch this. This is cool. I'm going to come over here, click on that. Bye-bye. Huh. That's all there is to doing this, guys. And it's the same with the rest of this thing. You're using, you're using, your, uh, you're using your, your graphic. Why, let me get to my layers. Where did my layers go? Did I put the layers away? Oh, here they are. Look, I'm using my, I'm using my overall shape to, to, to draw over, okay? And then I'm just creating my little objects. Now, j just, just to give you an idea of how easy this really is, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to my red color. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to pick a red. I know this is not my proper colors and everything, but I'm going to put a red in there because I want to show you what the cap's going to look like. Now I'm going to go to the effect menu, I'm going to go to 3D, and I'm going to go to revolve. And watch when, watch when I move this thing over here, and watch when I hit preview. Look at that. Is that nuts? You just made a cap, guys. I mean, that's how simple it is. You think you could do that? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, this is nothing to it, right? This is what I wanted you to see. I wanted you to see how simple this is. I wanted you to, I hope you get excited about this, and I hope you actually go in there and you play with this, because I definitely think that you can create a really beautiful 3D rendered bottle. I'll show you next week how to apply the graphics to it, and uh, you'll actually uh, be able to um, make a really good portfolio piece with this. All right, so I'm going to cancel this. Are you about this? No, that's cool. All right, let's go back to our, let's go back and let's do a little tiny bit more. I'm going to do the bottle. I'm going to at least do the bottle, and then, and then I'll, I'll probably move on because I, I, I want to make sure I get to the other part, which is the box. Okay, so the same thing, the same thing holds true with the bottle. Only difference is I'm not going to be able to make the bottle. I'm not going to be able to make the bottle with a, with a uh, basic shape. I could probably make parts of it with a basic shape, but I actually think it's better to start working with the pen tool, okay? And I'm going to take my time with this, and you guys can ask any questions that you want. So again, just keep it in mind. I'm going to click on the regular pen tool. I'm going to start over here on my guide, and I'm going to click and I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to come over to about here, and I'm going to click again. And then I'm going to drop way down to about here, holding the shift key down, right about there, click. And then I'm going to come over to here, right about here. And this time, instead of just clicking, I'm going to click, and I'm going to carefully drag this out. Got to be careful how you do this, because you got to get it just right. Okay? See how I did it? Yeah, I see. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is come over here, and I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to drop down to, say, right about there. And I'm going to click a little tiny bit just to give myself a bit of a curve, to get my curve started. You see my curve starting? Then I'm going to come right over to here. And I'm going to click, and I'm going to carefully drag out another nice little curved line that follows the contour of that bottle. You see what I'm doing? Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to click here again, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to let the 
screen redraw if it'll do it. It's not going to let me redraw. Son of a gun. Uh, uh, here we go. Ooh. Come way down to here, right? Come way down to here. Click. Okay. And then I'm going to come around to here and I'm going to click and I'm going to carefully drag, carefully drag. Now you can adjust this. This can all, they can all be adjusted, but you want to try to do as good of a job as you can in the first shot. Then I'm going to click here and then I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm just going to come straight over to here and click. Okay. Now, does that seem hard to you? No. Okay. Now I'm going to go up to the top. Let me go up to the top and let me show you how I'm going to finish this bottle off. And you're going to be amazed at how easy this is. Come up here, and I'm going to click where I started. You always got to close your shape by going to where you started. You know that, right? Yes. You know it now if you don't. And, and another thing to look for when you're actually sitting over top of your first shape, where, or your first anchor point, you see the little circle at the end of my little pen tool? Yes. yes. That, that's the cue to tell you that you're in the proper position, correct? You know that? I did not. Yeah, yeah, I you knew that. You, you, you look for the little circle, and now look, watch this. When I hide this layer, look at that. I'm going to deselect this guy. Now watch what happens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy right here, and I'm going to bring this guy in, and I'm going to place this guy. i got to place him just right. I think that's probably good right there. Uh, he probably should come down a little lower. Let me come in here. Whoops, 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 whoops. Let me get that out of the way. I've got to fool with this just a tiny bit. Uh, I know I'm being really fussy about this, but I like being fussy. It's who I am. There we go. That's perfect. See what I did? And copy it. Edit, copy. Okay. Edit, paste. And now we have another one. Okay. We want to make sure that we have several of these. Ah, Jolie. Let me just drag it over. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Move. Oh, there we go. Okay. So let's go to the view menu and let's zoom out. All right. So what I'm doing now is if you, I'm going to come back and put my graphic back on. Let me go to my layers and show you my bottle. Okay. So here's my bottle. This is the important thing. What I'm doing here essentially is I'm placing these little circles in strategic locations where they really belong. This is really hard to get. This is so small, it's hard to get. Uh, let's go to the view menu. Let me see something here. View, hide bounding box. Now we've got it. Okay. All right now, watch. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, you didn't know that? I'm no, sorry. Sure. I, I can't stand the bounding box. I oh, can't man. stand it. I absolutely hate it. I've had so many problems with that. I would get real frustrated and wanted to kill my computer. That right there. See that tool right there, the free transform tool? Uh -huh. That's your bounding box for Christ's sakes. You don't need the bounding box. The bounding box is something that the program puts on by default, and you don't need it. It's absolutely oh, no. pointless. So you don't want to have it on. I generally, if I need it, I use it there. So yes, you can just go to the view menu and you can either choose to bring your bounding box back. Come on. Go to the view menu and either bring your bounding box by showing it, okay? Or me, I'm hiding it because I don't like it, okay? I'm going to hide my original. And I'm going to take my little circle. What I'm doing now is I'm just adding some really cool details to my little model. All right? And I'm even going to zoom in here to make sure I like the placement of it. Okay? Because this is all going to count in the end. You know? The oh, that's perfect. See how that, see that, it, how that is and how that is? Yep. Wait till you see what this is going to do in the end. You're going to absolutely love this. And it's so simple. Come on. You're going to tell me this isn't easy to do? There isn't one person in this room tonight couldn't do this. Am I right? Oh, this is cool. This is easy. So here's, and this is even easier. Watch what I do here. All right? I know this is a good position, so I'm going to select this, edit, copy. Okay? And now I'm going to bring back my, I'm going to bring back my, uh, my model, and I'm going to scroll this thing down a little bit, and I got three of these guys right down here. So I'm going to go edit, paste in place. 
and I paste it in place. I'm going to hold the shift key down and the down arrow, and I'm going to move this thing down until I place it where I want it. And I'm going to place it right there. Okay? Now, it's a little bit on the big side, so I'm going to go with two instead of three. I'll go edit copy, edit paste in place, and then I'm just going to down arrow that one until I get it right about there. I'll have two instead of three, okay? Are you with me so far? Yep. Is Down that with part? Okay, now, I'm gonna bring this thing up a little tiny bit, and once again, just like I did before, I'm going to marquee all the elements. Let me see if I can. I didn't do that very well. All right, let me do this. Hold on. Let me marquee all those elements. I got all my elements marqueed. All of them. See them? Those are all my elements. You with me? Yep. With you. Pathfinder. Unite. Look at that. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. How easy was that? And, and actually, take a look. Look at how cleanly that curve came out. See what I mean? If you just take your time and you do it easy and look at how clean that line came out. And even that curve. See how clean that curve came out? You guys, you guys could do this. You guys could do this. I'm telling you. All right. Now, here's what we want to do. Because we want this to be a profile, we're going to go back to the scissors tool and we're going to come down here and we're going to click here. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to click here. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is select that, if I can, and delete it. Look at that. See how easy that is? That is that right there. That is what you're looking for. Okay? Now, we don't want it to be black. So what we're going to do is we're going to select it. We're going to go to the stroke, double click on the stroke, and I'm going to choose a very light gray color, very much like that color right there. See it? Light gray? And hit OK. Now watch when I deselect it. See what I got? Yep. All right, now watch this. Here's the problem. You guys, are you familiar with stacking order? You know what stacking order means, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if I were to just select these two and revolve them right now, what was the first element that I created? The cat. Right, and that cat. means that in the stacking order of things, the bottle is in front of the cap, isn't it? Yes. Okay, right. and that is not the correct order. So what I need to do is I need to click on the cap or I can click on the bottle, one or the other. I'll click on the cap, and I'm just going to go to the object menu, Arrange, bring to front, and now my cap is in front of my bottle. What's okay? the difference between bring to front and bring forward? Bring forward, it means it's just going to move it one element up, which in this case would have worked. But if you, were, if you had seven or eight shapes that you were working with and it was like a lower shape, you'd only be bringing it up one at a time. That's why if you have an element that you want to send all the way to the back, you always go send the back. And if you want something that you want to guarantee is going to come to the front, you go bring the front. That's, that's the major difference. Oh, okay. All right? Thank you. All right. Now, you ready for the, are you ready for the unveiling? Yes. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Now, I'm going, to actually, I'm going to actually come in here. Now, here, before I do this, you know, you don't have to have the same bottle. You don't have to have these little bumps. I'm a, show, I'm a showboat. I'm one of these people that I got to show off. So I went and I deliberately looked for a bottle that had these little extra flourishy shapes because I thought it would be an awful lot of fun to see if I could figure out how to get those shapes to work. You could do something simpler if you want, but it's up to you. I mean, my the important thing is that you have fun doing this. That's really what this is. In my opinion, this is a tremendous amount of fun, and you should have fun doing it. So that's all I, my, my suggestion to you. To select this guy, go to the effect menu, go to 3D, and go to revolve. There's two of them. We're going to do extrude and bevel next. 3D revolve. And the 3D Revolve dialog box comes up. It's, it's enormous. Hit Preview. 
Look at that. What do you think? Nice. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that, so that's easy. cool. I, I wish I had a new about this a, a long time ago. Well, you know about it now. And one of the reasons that I am doing this week one, which is probably a little bit on the weird side, you now have, you now have four weeks to fool around with this and come up with a really beautiful solution to your packaging. Next week, I'm going to show you how to go about putting the um, uh, labeling on it. I'm going to do this in multiple steps. This will give you a week to play with this. I'm not exactly finished with this. I want to show you how I went about making the inside, which is the, um, this um, uh, hot sauce. I want to show you how I did that. But at any rate, I just wanted to give you an idea. That's what it looks like so far. Are you cool with this? Yes. Okay. Is it, huh? A bowl of oil that you get for your car. What do you mean? Oh, no. this? Yeah, yeah, it does. It kind of does look like that, but in the end, it won't. It'll look. It'll look like. Uh, it'll look like um, hot sauce. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm now about to show you how I made the inner shape for the for the sauce. I click on this guy. I go edit copy. Edit paste in place okay so now I've made a duplicate and it's sitting in front of the other one I'm using the left arrow key to just move it over a tiny bit just like that okay are you with me yep okay I'm going to get my scissors tool I'm gonna to come over here to this point right there and I'm gonna click and I'm going to break that line and I'm going to delete that line and then I'm going to select this guy, okay? And I'm going to pick a color of, let's make it green this time. I think they have green uh, hot sauce as well. So let's make it green. I'm making it green. Now, there's one problem is that line is still on the line down at the bottom there. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have to deal with that. So I'm going to zoom in on this thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my direct selection tool okay now the regular selection tool only selects everything the direct selection tool allows me to select specific anchor points like that anchor point right there and that anchor point right there and I'm going to use my up arrow to just bring it up once twice just like that and if I want I can take this anchor point here and I can move that anchor point over just a touch like that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure I'd like it, but I'll try it. Maybe I can adjust this slightly and see how that goes. I'm probably creating more problems for my. No, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Actually, not too bad at all. I think I can probably drop it just a tiny bit. That's good. That's good. Okay. So you see what I did? I offset it prop a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go to the view menu, and I'm going to go fit artboard. Oh, you know what? Another thing. Another thing. See how that's a little bit longer there? Got to cut it. Nope. All you got to do is click on the direct selection tool, click on it, and use your right arrow to move it over until it hits that line right there. You don't even have to cut it. There's one other thing. Watch this. One more thing up here at the top. I want this shape to go to that line. So I'm going to get the pen tool and I'm going to click on that anchor point right there. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to go over to that line and click. And now I've got my shape. Okay? Okay. And remember the stacking order. Go to the view menu and go fit artboard and window. And actually, let me zoom in. There, that's probably pretty good. Okay, remember the stacking order. The green is in front of the bottle. So what I want to do with this is I want to go edit cut or copy, or no, edit cut and edit, edit paste in back. So what I did was I pasted it in back of that shape right there. All right? Okay. Now are you ready for the unveiling? Select all these guys. Go up to the effect menu, 3D, revolve, and hit preview. And it revolves the whole thing 
oh, you know what? I missed the top piece. I missed the piece. Hold on. Cancel. I missed the piece. Let me get that top piece. There we go. Uh, effect 3D Revolve. And by the way, uh, there's more to this. There's more to this than 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 just what I'm doing here. I mean, you can rotate this when you when you do yours. Play with it. You can rotate this using. There are different ways that you can go. Like here's a front view. See how that makes a nice front view. I kind of like the offset front view though. Off axis front. I kind of like that view. That's why I left it that way. But you can go in and you can try different views, okay? Isometric left. Look at that. Of course, now it knocks the it knocks them out of position. So I, I would I would either choose the front view, okay, or the off axis front, which is the one that I like. And I'm gonna hit okay. All right. Now you're not seeing your you're not seeing your content. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select just this guy right here, the outside one, and you're going to go to the go to the window menu and go to transparency. And have you ever worked with the transparency panel before? No. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's just using overlay. The transparency panel, what it does is it sets your object to be transparent in one way. Let's see what other ones we have. We have darken. That's kind of good. I like the darken one. These are different blend modes. These blend modes basically take whatever object you have selected and blends the object into whatever is beneath it. So I'm multiplying it in. That's a good one too. That looks pretty good. That looks really nice actually. Okay. And there are different blend modes. Lighten. Okay. You don't see much happening with that one. Screen. Eh, I don't like the look of that. The one that I like, I think I like is the multiply. I think that looks pretty nice. What do you guys think? Let's deselect it. And there you have it. Go to the view menu. View. Guides. Hide guides. There you have it. That hot sauce looks really dangerous. There you go. All right. Now, I don't know whether the color is really right. Here's what's cool about this. What you can do is you can select this thing and you can go object lock selection. Okay. Now I come in here. I can click that guy right there. And if I don't like that color red, I can go back into my swatches. Where the heck are my swatches? Uh, where'd they go? Here they are. And I can choose a red color and look at that. <laughs> it changes the color instantly. I think that looks more like a hot. No, it doesn't. Where was the red I had? There it was right there. These are not my real colors. Or if you want, you can come in here and you can play around with your color until you get something that really looks like hot sauce. That might look good. Yeah, it looks like hot sauce. What do you think? Does that look like hot sauce to you? That looks like Tabasco. <laughs> Tabasco? Well, that's what hot sauce is. Tabasco, isn't it? Not if you're a real hot sauce person. Oh, really? <laughs> Tabasco's fake. It's more vinegar. Okay, so what do you guys think after, after seeing this? What do you think? Pretty cool. You think you could handle that? Yeah. Did I, did, I, did I give you a demonstration that was easy for you to understand? And let me deselect it so you can get the whole effect. Can, did I do a demonstration that, that's easy for you to understand? Yes. Absolutely. Good. 